Hello and welcome. My name is Meepolis, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today I'm talking about The Fire Never Goes Out, a memoir in pictures by Noelle Stevenson. I believe the material is taken from Noelle's blog, published by Harpertine in 2020. Content notes for mental health, burnout, nudity, and gender journey messiness. Creator of Nimona and writer on the initial run of Lumberjanes and the reboot of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power, Noelle Stevenson is married to fellow artist Molly Ostertag. Over the course of the pandemic, Stevenson has published a short free comic about his top surgery on Gumroad. It came out as trans mask and by gender. They've also talked about being diagnosed as bipolar and living through COVID with ADHD. And they have also come up against a couple of public callouts and have made some apologies. This past month, they apparently launched a sub stack that will be focused on mental health and gender and more. Not thrilling. What keywords came to mind reading this book? early success, career, moving across the country, and school. The official Goodreads synopsis is, quote, quote, in a collection of essays and personal mini-comics that span eight years of their young adult life, author-illustrator Noelle Stevenson charts the highs and lows of being a creative human in the world. Whether it's hearing the wrong name called at their art school graduation ceremony or becoming a National Book Award finalist for their debut graphic novel, Nimona, Noelle captures the little and big moments that make up a real life with the wit and wisdom and vulnerability that are all their own, end quote. An interesting enough read, it did leave me feeling a bit shortchanged. I'm not sure how much of this book is new content, not having followed Noelle's blog originally. It feels like it all could have come off the blog, though. So despite all this being new for me, it still felt a bit recycled. I think this mostly boils down to it being an artifact and a more than a little scattered of one, rather than a look back from the Noel of the present. Not the end of the world, and I don't feel like I can begrudge him what seems like an easy and obvious book. Gender and sexuality are obviously somewhat central to the book, although as I said, it was not written with through lines in mind. Race and class could have been explored a bit more. The book does read a bit like a bottom to the top story, and I don't think it's totally unreasonable for me to think we brushed by some people and identities that probably helped him kick off his whirlwind career. That said, as a series of yearly updates on a blog, as someone who has since the writing of the book come out about their own neurodiversity, not sure if the idea is disabled, it's hard to not read that back into the book. Mental health has clearly not been easy for Stevenson. And I'm not surprised to learn that they will do more reflecting on this creatively going forward. They have also struggled in a number of people's minds with depicting disability in the past. I hope this self-discovery and criticism will lead to more self-reflection on how pervasive ableism is in the world and doing better. But we shall see. Not my favorite Stevenson read. I think I'll put this one in the 3 out of 5 star category for now. Bye all, keep reading, and organized and capitalist oppression. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.